welcome back to James M. Short Stadium as we have the second leg of the doubleheader here for Hofstra Pride Lacrosse. This one is going to be between the Hofstra Pride and the visiting Brown Bears. Hello everyone, once again my name is Jack McCarthy, joined alongside by Ian Banky. Ian, we saw a great first game between the Hofstra Pride men's lacrosse team and the LIU Sharks. Now we get to the second leg. This is a 2-0 Hofstra Pride team coming off of a major win over number 25th ranked at the time. Vanderbilt, 11-8, they went on the road, they took care of business, now they come back home, and they got to keep getting themselves back up because it is a tough CAA conference again. Yeah, it's, there's no easy games here in the CAA, and you know that's why you play teams like Vanderbilt. You get those tough tests out of conference to prepare you for the tough stretch ahead. And the Pride met it with confidence, they met it with swagger, and they got that upset win, and now they themselves are receiving votes in many polls. And it's receiving votes, they had a... Another big moment is Nikki Manella was player of the week for CAA. Jess Smith was defensive player of the week for the CAA. So they're starting to get some recognition and especially they're receiving votes. They're starting to get themselves into national recognition. When you talk about how difficult the CAA conference is, they're going they're gonna be going up against a number fifth ranked team in the nation in Stony Brook. Stony Brook is joining the CAA. Obviously, we knew them as a Long Island rival, but but you got to make sure you are playing at your best once we get to CAA play, but when we get to a point where that's going to be a team that we're going to play. And we'll go back over that Vanderbilt game. Hofstra raced out to an immediate three-goal lead as both Nikki and Taylor Manella scored goals. Taylor had one as opposed to Nikki's two. They gave up one goal to start out that second quarter, but then they immediately responded with a Lauren Coletti goal. And they went into that halftime break with a lead of 4-3. to three. Things got a little bit close to start out that third quarter, but the Pride immediately responded with five straight goals to open up a massive lead at 9-3. to three. However, Vanderbilt responded, made it 9-7. to seven. And midway through the fourth quarter, Nikki Manella scored with a woman up, and then she would add another one late to have seven goals on the season. As she really paced this Hofstra Pride team, five goals, three assists, eight points. As previously stated, she was the CAA Player of the Week, and she really had that breakout game. We talked to head coach Shannon Smith before the game, and that was the game that they wanted her to have, that breakout game to really put herself on the map, especially playing with her older sister. Well, that's for sure, and it's, it's especially impressive seeing her as a freshman coming out and leading the team from the front on the attack, and it provides a lot of promise for this Hofstra team, seeing the youth come in and contribute immediately here, not waiting until they're an upperclassman. And she, Nikki Manella is the team leader in goals at seven. Katie Kelly leads the team in points and assists, and for the Hofstra Pride, again, they're 2-0, they're welcoming in Brown, they have a chance to go 3-0 to really put themselves in a good spot. Uh, the only undefeated teams right now in the CAA are Towson, Stony Brook, Hofstra, and University of Delaware, so they really need to keep finding a way to pace themselves. More importantly, when it comes down to playing a team like Stony Brook, if you can play them close, even if you lose, and you're playing good against these ranked teams, that win over Vanderbilt, huge, because that's a ranked team. Your RPI goes up, your chance at making the NCAA tournament and at large goes up. That's for sure, and you know, that's especially what this out-of-conference schedule is for. Heading into a tough conference like the CAA, you prepare yourselves for those tough games, but you also build your resume to look good when you enter the end of season, when you enter May, and uh, the, the committee is looking at your out-of-conference schedule, your RPI, and considering who is going to get in, even if you didn't win your tournament. We look across the aisle to a team in Brown. This is going to be their season opener. They have yet to play yet this season, and that's something that Coach Smith was talking about. They are going to be quick. They're going to be a lot faster, just not only because it's their first game, they're trying to get themselves started off on the right foot, but they, as a team, are just a quick team. Hofstra needs to be aware of cutters. They need to make sure that they are getting their positions, and it does start 
at the draw control as Courtney Carollo. She has been a huge aspect for this Pride team so far. Absolutely. And if you tuned in for the men's game, you saw how critical it was when you win the draw, you control the possession, you control the pace of the game. So if the Pride could do this here in the women's game against Brown, that would be a great start for Hofstra in controlling the offense. And, you know, you get off that early start like they did against Vanderbilt getting the first three goals. And again, they, when it comes down to it for the Hofstra Pride, you need to make sure you're off to a quick start. It's the same thing. We talked about it, needing it for if you're the men's team. Now we're at the women's side. Quick start does not change. Playing a full game of lacrosse does not change. You need to make sure that you do not have any, no, no lapses, no miscommunications, no areas where you just kind of drop focus because again, it's a team like Brown who is fresh. They're looking to open up their season well. They will capitalize on it. Yeah, especially a, a team that has a lot of returners for Brown. They had an average season last year, but they're looking to build on that. They're looking to make an impression on this Ivy League and, and emerge as a powerhouse uh, in, in a very prestigious conference. Well, we're going to take a quick break as these starting lineups are getting read out. When we come back, we will have opening draw control, starting lineups, and a game between the Hofstra Pride and the Brown Bears. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Women's Lacrosse, presented by Flow Sports and 88.7 FM WRHU. Welcome back to James M. Sheward Stadium as we are just moments away from opening draw control between the Hofstra Pride and the Brown Bears. Once again, my name is Jack Carthy, joined alongside by Ian Banky. Ian, we are just about to read out the starting lineups, about to see the opening draw control. What are your keys to the game so far? I mean, you, just, you mentioned it for Hofstra Pride. It's really just carrying that theme over from the men's game, just controlling the face-offs, controlling the opening draw, and, and, and controlling the ball. Starting the possession off on the attack is so critical for this team to keep the momentum going and uh, to, to really start off on the front foot and start off attacking and aggressive, get on this hot streak like they started off against Vanderbilt. So we'll go to the starting lineups. First for the visiting Brown Bears, they will have Claire Jeske, Julian Balkunis, Maddie Joyce, Annie Burton, Leah Caputo, Paige Gillen, Sophia Rucker, Lydia Borg Bongiorno, Mia Mascone, Emmy Lau, and Jess Bakes with starting goalkeeper Claire Mahoney. So who do you have circled as a key player in this one for Brown? Well, it's really two players. It's Claire Jeschke and Mia Miscone. Both of these players led Brown in scoring last season, both with 46 points. So they'll be, they'll be getting the attention as the leading scorers on this team again this year, maybe taking a step up and, and providing more attack as well. So really, if Hofstra can shut down these two players, Brown is going to struggle to generate the attack that they're looking to, to make in this game. And on the other side, the Hofstra starters will be Kayla Robertson, Jackie Gaddy, Kaylee, Carrie Walzer, Kate Fiola, Bryn Hepting, Nikki Manella, Taylor Manella, Megan Flannery, Kendall Smith, Trinity Reed, Courtney Carollo, and starting in goal, the defending CAA Defensive Player of the Week will be Jess Smith. The Hofstra Pride will be in their white home jerseys with blue lettering, a gold trim on the side, and white pants. Brown will be in their brown away jerseys with white lettering and a red trim around that. Hofstra Pride will be traveling from right to left across your TV radio dial, and the Brown Bears will be traveling from left to right. An opening draw control was won there by the Pride. Good job to open up as Courtney Carollo gets started early in this one. So getting pushed out of bounds there for the Pride was Kate Fiola. Restless will blow, and the Hofstra Pride will retain possession as Kerry Walzer now has it for Hofstra. So going back behind the net to Taylor Manella, who loves that position to really get started behind the net, as she will pass over to her sister in Nikki. Back up top to Katie Kelly on that exterior fan, as she will drop it off to Nikki Manella. Manella going one-on-one -on -one with the defender there, as she gets shoved off, and she will flip it over to Megan Flannery. Flannery over to Taylor Manella. As Manella sends one in the middle, great intercepted pass, and it's going to be taken back the other way by Claire Jeske. So a first defense or offensive possession goes by the wayside for the Pride. A great interception by Jeske and immediately taking it back for a attacking possession for the Bears. Scaputo has it for Brown as she will send it up top to number 44. That's Jesse Bakes. 
So Brown setting it up as goes to Maddie Joyce. Back to Bakes. As Bakes will go on that far side as she's looking for an option as she goes back towards the middle. Mia Moscone with it now for Brown as she fakes a shot up high. She backs off, has a defender on her in Trinity Reed. Moscone will send it over to Jeske. As Jeske looking for someone. She just can't find anyone. She has a pick set for her, but she can't do anything as she will send it back behind the net to the waiting Leah Caputo. Caputo going one on one there with Bryn Hepting as she will back out and send over to a teammate on that exterior fan in number 23, Maddie Joyce. Joyce cutting towards the middle into that interior fan, sends one of the right there on the mouth of the crease, but it gets knocked down by Jess Smith. Hofstra will take it back the other way. It'll start with Jackie Gaddy. A great defensive turn there by Hofstra, locking down that interior, not allowing Brown to enter it, although they were looking on several passes, and that led to the eventual turnover. A missed pass there was dropped by Hepting, and now Brown has it once again as it's sent across to their side of the defensive line, where Paige Dillon has it. So Brown still going up Andy Burton as it gets sent to that far side. So it's with number 32, that's Margaret Woodbury. Woodbury passes over to Bakes, as Bakes will go to Moscone. So Moscone with it, takes it to the interior, exterior fan, into the interior, fakes a shot up high, and she will pass over to Mason. Mason, down low to Jeske. Jeske spins off her defender in Kendall Smith. She can't find anything, so she just will send it over to Bakes. Bakes it attempted into Jeske. She's going to fall down, and we're going to have our first free position shot of the afternoon. It will be taken by Claire Jeske. She'll be on that middle far fan, or hash mark. Yeah, Kendall Smith just brought the uh, stick down on her. A little bit too aggressive there. So one defender near is going to be Trinity Reed. She takes a shot, scores! So it's going to be one nothing early in this one. 11 minutes, 55 seconds as Claire Jeske just sends that one down past the waiting left foot of Jess Smith. It's one nothing. And that's just what Brown was looking for. They look to their leading scorers. Jeske right from the front gets the first goal of the season for the Brown Bears in their season opener. Brown goal for 27th of the season. That's by number 11. going to be for the Hofstra Pride a need to get a good offensive possession. They did well on that previous defensive possession, but they just could not get a successful clearing attempt as that's Jeske's first goal of the season. Brown's first goal total. So we go back for a draw control as Ofstra looking to get something. Brown trying to add on to it as we await the ref's official go ahead. It's going to be launched back towards a Brown waiting player as it's unable to be corralled by Gillen, but it immediately is picked up by the goal scorer in Jeske as she will drop it and it gets picked up by Hofstra, taking it back the other way. Good pick set there by Bryn Hepting as Hofstra has it as their first clearing attempt is Jackie Gaddy has it for the pride. So Gaddy spinning around, she's going to find a teammate in Flannery. And a attempted pass is going to go just out of the reach there for the pride as the intended target was Nikki Manella. So Hofstra has another offensive possession go away, but a missed pass there. Intended target was Bongiorno as she's going to have it go out of bounds. Hofstra's going to get, get it with Katie Kelly. Both teams struggle, struggling to find connection on these passes early, especially going out wide. Carrie Walzer with it for the prize. She's going to send it up top to Jackie Gaddy. Rest whistle will blow. Hofstra's going to get the restart as we wait to see the ref's official go ahead. But it will be with Jackie Gaddy as she has a cutting teammate there in Megan Flannery. So Hofstra still with it. Kate Fiola now has it for the pride. She's going to flip it up to a teammate there. And Carrie Walzer. Walzer cutting towards the middle. Shot. Easy save there. Makes as Claire Mahoney has her first action of today's game. And Brown will take it back the other way. Mahoney's first action of the game. First action of her college career. The freshman making her first save out of New Canaan, Connecticut. A graduate of New Canaan High School as... We have a ref stoppage there. Looked like just went a little bit too early. It was 
Lydia Bongiorno, who started up. She made that quick pass to Camphausen, and she immediately finds a different teammate in Annie Burton. Brown with it back in that offensive zone, and we have 10 minutes, 15 seconds left to play in this first quarter as Brown has the early 1-0 lead on that far side that's in the stick of Mia Moscone. As Brown still trying to find something to the perimeter, and they will send it out to the exterior to Caputo. Caputo still with it, cutting from far side, makes a backhanded pass, but unable to catch it was number 28, Molly Stevens, and then she spins around and she puts it home. So it's now 2-0, 9 minutes, 57 seconds in or left in this quarter, and Hofstra just does not get a break there. What a goal for Brown. Yeah, just sticking with it. The, the ball initially fell out of the stick, but picked it right back up and shot it past Jess Smith. And now Brown, an early two-goal lead here. An early two-goal lead, and correction there, it was Annie Burton instead of Molly Stevens who scored that goal. So that'll be Burton's first goal of the season. As it is now 2-0. to zero. 9 minutes 57 seconds and for the Hofstra Pride they need to find some sort of way to get back on offense and get a goal here because they have not looked great when it has come down to their offensive possessions. Yeah, just a couple of turnovers when they try to get something set up so they can win the, the, win the draw here with Carollo could go a long way to helping. So Carolla wins it up, but unable to get on the end of it is either team, and Brown's going to get it off of a ref's whistle. So Hofstra can't get those wins. They have only there down in the draw controls, two to one. And now Brown will start up as Emmy Lau has it for the Bears. So Lau will send it back to a teammate in number 30, Sophia Rucker, as Brown will switch the field. Sent into the middle there to Maddie Joyce as it goes back behind the net. So Mia Moscone now has it for Brown. She cuts away from a defender, cuts towards the middle, jump shot, save, and it's in! What a goal for Brown as it looked like it was a backspin that spun out of the net. Then it hits off of Jess Smith's leg and goes in. So that's going to be a goal there no goal. for Moscone. Actually, correction, no goal. So, might have been a crease violation. I don't know. Did you see anything there, Ian? Uh, I don't know. I just heard uh, our PA announcer, Sadiq Faruqi, uh, call no goal as the uh, official was waving it off. So, uh, maybe a crease violation. We'll see if the uh, uh, Mima Stone is going yeah. to get a yellow card there. So, it went from a goal to a yellow card. So, Hofstra is going to be on the advantage now as they look to take it over that midfield line and it will be taken by Trinity Reed as she makes a pass to a teammate in Rachel Graff. Now if you're Hofstra here you have to take advantage of this fortunate bounce. You thought you were down three goals but now you have the advantage here off the yellow card so you have to be aggressive here and try to take advantage of the cards that have deal dealt in your favor. So Hofstra immediately starts their passing in a clockwise formation around the net as it makes its way to Taylor Manella. It goes back up top to her younger sister Nikki Manella before she passes to Lauren Coletti. So Hofstra continuing that counter or that clockwise formation as it goes back behind the net and makes its way up top now to Taylor Manella. Manella to Coletti. As there's 63 seconds left on the shot clock, 8 minutes, 27 left on the game clock. So Taylor Manel is going to get in. She passes to her sister and Nikki. Nikki to Coletti. Hofstra just playing the perimeter right now. They have a cutter there in Nikki, but immediately she gets taken. As Coletti's going to get it off a cup, but she can't get it. And we're going to have another free position shot, this time in favor of the Pride. So they now have a chance to make it a one-goal game. It'll be Lauren Coletti who takes it from that center hash mark. And a smart play by Coletti, just crashing the net and forcing the foul. So Coletti winds up on her right side. And she's got three defenders just in the area. So she's going to whip a shot or a pass back. Tries to get something sent and is getting knocked down behind the net. We're going to have another free position shot for the Pride is who got knocked down was Katie Kelly, but she's going to be on the farthest hash mark around towards the near side here, so she's got an option to pass over to Carrie Walzer, and she will take it. Walzer sends it up to Nikki Manella as Manella sends it to Walzer. Walzer back to Manella. 
Manella to Manella as Nikki goes to Taylor and Taylor goes back to Nikki. Ref whistle blows and we're going to stop play, but Hofstra is going to retain possession here. Carrie Walzer has it for the pride. 7 minutes, 48 seconds, 26 on the shot clock, and it'll be Carrie Walzer with a free position shot. She's going to be on the middle hash mark on the near side here. She's got some options. Nikki Manella is going to be wide open if she can find her. Shot just over the net. But Taylor Manella is going to be back there to retain possession for the pride. 30 seconds left on this yellow card. Pass in the middle. Shot and save as Rachel Graff is stoned point blank. And Hofstra is still fighting for it as it gets picked up there by Lauren Coletti. So Coletti fighting to find someone. And she's going to find a Nikki Manella. And Manella is going to get tripped up. And we're going to have a... We see another yellow card. So 15 seconds left on that first yellow card. Now Hofstra is going to have two yellow cards in their favor as Lydia Bongiorno is going to get called. Brown playing physically on the defensive side of the ball. And while that is keeping Hofstra out of the interior, it's also leading to these penalties and these yellow cards. So Hofstra on another advantage here. So we wait to start it up here with... Nikki Manella, she has her sister Taylor Manella, and she will pass it over to her. So Hofstra with a huge advantage for the next 10 seconds. Then they will have just under two minutes left. And that other one. Lauren Coletti with it, passes over to Nikki, back to Taylor. As Hofstra now goes with a counterclockwise formation, that first penalty is over. So Hofstra with it, back by the net to Katie Kelly. Katie Kelly goes to Carrie Walzer. Walzer to Nikki Manella. Manella fakes a shot before she tries to get to that interior fan but she is immediately met by two defenders, and we're going to have a free position shot for the Hofstra Pride. Taking it will be Taylor Manella on that far side middle hash mark. It's a lot of free chances here for the Pride, but yet to take advantage. Well, this benefits Hofstra, but Taylor Manella is not known for taking shots off of the free position, and there she goes. She will button hook away, and Hofstra will start with a reset. She passes over to her sister in Nikki Manella. Manella goes to Coletti. Hofstra immediately back to that counterclockwise passing formation around the net on the perimeter. Nikki Manella has it, fakes a pass to Taylor Manella before she passes to Lauren Coletti and now Hofstra is passing it counterclockwise. Back behind the net, Hofstra finds Taylor Manella up top, a tempted pass to Lauren Coletti that gets knocked down and Taylor Manella struggles to handle it. 26 seconds left on the shot clock, 55 seconds left on this yellow card. Pass to Nikki Manella. She cuts towards the middle and she had a shot there, but rest whistle will blow it dead and it'll be a free position shot for Nikki Manella in the Hofstra Pride. She's gonna have Taylor Manella back behind the net as we await the ref's start. And here she goes, she goes in, tries to make a pass back door there to awaiting Katie Kelly, but Katie Kelly has to jump up and it is picked up there by number 23, Maddie Joyce, and the Brown Bears. Sent up to number 14, Goldie Aronson, and it gets knocked away by Nikki Minella, who's running after the ground ball, but she can't beat a defender there as the ball is still loose on the ground, and finally, it gets picked up by Paige Gillen. Hofstra was right there on the doorstep, but just a little bit quicker to the ball, and now there's a collision here at midfield. I think we're going to get it a yellow card, and Hofstra's gonna get yet another call in their favor as that was Jesse Banks who's gonna be the guilty party on that one. So Hofstra, 18 seconds left on that first yellow card, or the second yellow card that was handed out to Lydia Bongiorno. They're gonna have two minutes again here as Jesse Bakes will go. Giving the scorekeeper a workout on uh, operating the penalty board over there. However, still 2-0 to zero in favor of Brown. Five minutes, 46 seconds left to play in this first quarter. Hofstra needs to do something about their offensive woes. They've gotten free position shots. They've had woman up opportunities, but they just have not been able to score on any of them yet. You know, it's just missing that last connection. They had the one open opportunity to Katie Kelly that last time, but the pass was just too high on what left a wide open net begging there. So Hofstra just trying to connect on that one final pass to convert. So try to get it over that restricted line as Rachel Graff will take it back behind the net where she passes to Katie Kelly, who toe taps and keeps herself inbounds. A pass in the middle there that gets knocked down. Col Chloe Sedler was the option as she goes back on defense. Brown trying to take it up as Lydia Bongiorno has had her yellow card expired. Hofstra 
going back on defense, but Brown can't get it over that restricted line as Udo finally able to do so as she will dish it off to a teammate in Von Giorno. So again there, just one more pass that Hofstra unable to make. Sedler was right in front of net with the pass just out of her reach and now Brown on the ball with a chance to run out this clock. Jeschke with it is, as you said, a chance to run down the clock. They won't be able to fully whittle down that Jesse Bakes yellow card, but they'll get it pretty much over as Claire Jeschke just waiting for the right teammate to get on. She's going to find it in Annie Burton. So the two goal scorers in Jeschke and Burton pass back and forth to one another before is a pass over to Caputo. So on that far side, Caputo gets it back. She sends it to the middle as Jeschke now has it before going to Burton. Burton back to Jeschke is, again, Brown just not really interested in getting anything outside of this perimeter as there's 25 seconds left on the yellow card, 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Pass into the middle there. It gets tipped as the intended target was Leah Caputo. Hofstra's going to get possession back as that was not a shot on goal. So they have a chance with just around 10 seconds left on the yellow card. I don't think they're going to be able to get it down in time, but they can go back on offense as right now with it for the pride is Trinity Reed where she passes over to Jackie Gaddy. Gaddy trying to get around some defenders and she's going to use some help there as Kendall Smith now has it for Hofstra. She'll pass to Hepting and Hofstra gets it over that restricted line. Just trying to get it set up there as the uh, the pass intended to Walzer is a little bit wild. A little bit wild and then on her attempts to pick up that ground ball she puts it right into the waiting stick of Emmy Lau. Brown and Hofstra both struggling to get their passes as bobbling that one was Paige Gillen. But Hofstra, and she's going to lose possession there as Taylor Manella now has it for the pride, but she has eight brown jerseys in the vicinity as she takes over the restricted line and then just slows it down, gets the help of a ref's whistle, and she can wait to get the right personnel on. So slowly walking with it now off of a flip pass from is Carrie Walzer. Walzer will pass to Flannery as both Flannery and Nikki Manella go back and forth. So Nikki Manella scanning the field and she will pass over to Megan Flannery. Flannery takes it to that perimeter fan but she will back out and pass over to Carrie Walzer. Walzer still with it, hesitates, shimmies to her left but gets nothing there so she'll go back behind the net to Taylor Manella. Nella has some options, spins off a defender, and she just cannot get towards net there. Good look, but did not have anything as Claire Mahoney was right there for the Brown. And great positioning from the freshman netminder. Kerry Walzer with it for the pride, backs away and will pass over to Nikki Manella. So Manella takes it to her right, shot just wide. Hofstra's going to retain possession, but it was a close foot race there. As just barely getting to it was Katie Kelly, one in the area as it looked like it was Isabella Cotier. So still with a little pride as Nikki Manella shot. Great save there again by Claire Mahoney as she has looked strong. That's her third save of the quarter right now. And on the other side, Jess Smith has yet to make any saves. However, she's faced only two shots. Claire Mahoney's looked very comfortable in that, which is impressive for her first collegiate game. So Annie Burton has it and she will pass it back to Leah Caputo. Caputo sends it to the far side where it is taken by Mia Moscone. Moscone had a goal taken off the board and she ended up getting a yellow card in the end. So she shakes, trying to get towards the net. She gets that interior fan. She sends one over to a teammate in Jackie Mason. Mason one on one with Kate Fiola and that gets a swap there as Emily Wigand goes on. So back by the net, backhanded pass attempted, and we're going to have a foul called against the Hofstra Pride as we will have a free position shot awarded to Brown, and it looks like, can't exactly see the number who it is. It's going to be 23, Maddie Joyce taking it for Brown. And a prime position, too, right in front of goal. So an interesting setup here for the Bears is they have no one standing on the hash marks. They have four attackers back behind the net, two that are flanking Maddie Joyce. So Hofstra, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one straight up against Jess Smith. So Joyce cradles it on her right side. 
refs have a wait up there because the refs want to get the defenders back in place as Joyce gets ready to start. She takes a shot. Great save there by Smith as she just knocks that away with her right glove hand. So good job to get her first save of the game if you're Jeff Smith. Yeah, that's a way to just get your legs underneath of you. A great save on the free shot. So keeps Hofstra right in this game. And then also a good hustle play on the back end by Trinity Reed to keep possession with the prop. 35 seconds left to play in this first quarter, a quarter that Brown scored back-to-back -back goals in the Hofstra Pride despite having more offensive zone time and offensive chances, just have not been able to put one in the back of the net there as Ashley McDonald loses the ball and it's taken back the other way by Brown. It's on the stick of Mia Moscone. Moscone has a few options and she will just slow it down as she's going to hold for the final shot here. Very Good point there. There's 10 seconds left, 5 seconds left now. As Moscone still has it, she shakes to her right, takes a shot. It goes well over the net as the horn will sound. And through one quarter of play, the Brown Bears lead the Hofstra Pride by a score of 2-0. to zero. We're going to take a quick timeout, and when we come back, we will have second quarter action between the Pride and the Bears. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Women's Lacrosse, presented by Flow Sports and 88.7 FM WRHU. Welcome back to James M. Stewart Stadium as we are just about to get into quarter number two between the Hofstra Pride and the visiting Brown Bears. Once again, my name is Jack Carthy, joined alongside by Ian Banky. Ian, Hofstra had four total shots, or five total shots, three of them going on goal, as opposed to Brown's four total shots with three of them going on goal. The difference being, Hofstra is trailing by a score of two to zero, and for a lot of that, Hofstra had the offensive zone time through one quarter of play. Yeah, that's for sure, but Brown's defense has adapted the style of bending but not breaking. They're willing to concede a lot of that zone time, but they're not willing to concede an open shot on goal. They're not breaking down to just concede and give possession back. They're willing to, to run out the shot clock and force Hofstra to, to make some shots that they might not want to take in order to, to turn the ball over. Well, back for the draw control, it will be Corolla versus Lau. As right now, Brown has that two to one advantage in draw control was one. And despite a false start there for Lau, Corolla still was able to take the victory there. So both benefiting from that false start and from a clean faceoff win as Hofstra will have the first possession of the second quarter just as they had the first possession of the first quarter. So Russell will blow as Kerry Walzer was fighting through two Brown defenders and she will spin off and pass it over to Nikki Manella. A couple times now that Brown has used that double team to just try to slow the Hofstra offense down. So Hofstra's still with it as Rachel Graff has it for the pride. She's going to send it over to her teammate in Megan Flannery. Flannery sends it to Nikki Manella. Nikki Manella again, reigning player of the week as she passes over to Walzer. Walzer is going to get tripped up there. Flag's going to come out. So Hofstra are going to have a free position shot here for Carrie Walzer and with a chance to make it a one-goal game once again. Hofstra has had a lot of these opportunities, but yet to convert. Just trying to scratch one on the board. So Walzer with it on her right side. As Mahoney, the goalie for Brown, has yet to give up a goal. So Walzer shot and an easy save there from Claire Mahoney. as She just gets right out to it. And she makes her fourth save of the game. But a missed pass there. Hofstra's going to get possession. So Hofstra will take it full advantage of Claire Mahoney and Emmy Lau's miscommunication. And the Hofstra bench making some noise here. They're trying to rally the troops. They know that not much has been working on the offensive side of the ball, but a little bit of support, moral support from the bench can go a long way. Nikki Manella has it for the pride. Stutters against the defender. Shot just over the net as she drops her stick. I think she got hit up there as... She is slow to go grab it, but I think it was just off of her wrist as she took that shot and the defender on her was Paige Gillen. We go back behind the net as Jackie Gaddy will start it up for the Pride. She has one teammate with her in Katie Kelly. Gaddy waiting. She will pass it over to Kelly. Kelly goes to Taylor Manella and Manella will pass it up to Rachel Graff. Graff passes to teammate there in Jackie Gaddy. Gaddy 
goes to Nikki Manella. Manella cutting towards the middle. Shot and save there again as Claire Mahoney is just standing on her head. Save number five of the afternoon. And it's still 2-0 to zero in favor of the Bears. 13 minutes flat left on the clock. A lot of these saves, Mahoney has made them look easy. Her positioning and her reflexes have just made it look so smooth in that for the for the Bears. So Brown will take it back the other way. And if you're the Hofstra Pride, you got to find some way to break through the iron wall that has been Claire Mahoney in her collegiate debut is on the offensive side. Brown has it in the stick of Mia Moscone. Pass in the middle, shot and scores as it goes back there and it's gonna be Moscone who will get the goal for the Bears. It is now three to zero in favor of Brown. Brown that time just broke down the Hobbs for defense. Moscone found herself all alone right in the slot. All she had to do was make a nice move and score. Nothing that Smith could do in that. And she just cut to the middle and set one there in that opposite corner is Moscone has her first goal of the game. Second goal technically of the game if you count the one that was taken away from her. First one that actually counts. First one that actually counts. So it is now 3-0 to zero in favor of Brown. And we're going to have a change on the draw control as it'll be Greta Sirqui who will go for the Bears. It's still for Hofstra. It's going to be Courtney Carollo. But it's 2-2, two to two, so it looks like just a changing of personnel to see if you can get those back-to-back -back offensive possessions. Yeah, Brown just trying to heap on the pressure here, and a draw control will go a long way to helping it in doing that. So waiting for the ref to give us the official go-ahead for this draw control is a lot of posturing on that outside. False start, and it's going to be a win for Brown as Carollo goes ahead a little bit too early, but she immediately gets on defense, and she does a great job at pressuring, but Brown able to slow it down and send it to the opposite side there as Emmy Lau now has it for the Bears. So Lau trying to get over that restricted line, but Hofstra is just sending waves towards her. She can't do it with a pass, and she's going to send it across to Bongiorno, and Bongiorno will get it with Julia Ford. So Ford goes back behind the net where she finds the most recent goal scorer of Mia Moscone. Moscone going up against Gaddy. As Moscone trying to get it out from behind the net, she's going on that perimeter of the crease and she will walk it out to that perimeter fan. So Hofstra down by three, 11 minutes 35 left in this half as Brown will send it up to Julia Ford. Ford has one defender near her in Alexandra Moss. As it's correction, Kate Fiola is going against Julia Ford, and Ford will have to pass it over to Sirqui. Sirqui can't get anything, so she will have to pass it away. As Hofstra doing a good job at posturing here, but just can't get any turnovers as Jeschke has it in on that far side. She will pass over to a teammate in Annie Burton. As Burton directs traffic and sends it to... Moscone, Moscone jumping shot just wide. Shot clock will expire. And Hofstra will take it back the other way, starting with Trinity Reed. That's what Hofstra needs in the defensive end. Just a, a prolonged stand there, not allowing Brown inside of the fan, keeping them around the perimeter, and eventually the shot clock ran out. Now an open passing attempt here. Nick Minella now has it for the pride. She has a cutter in Walzer, sends one to the backside. We're going to have a free position shot for Hofstra as that intended target was Katie Kelly and she will be on that far side middle hash mark and Hofstra needs to find something. I got to imagine that Katie Kelly is just going to rip a shot here and see if Claire Mahoney can make another save. Just something to test Mahoney. She decides not to and she passes over to Nikki Manella. So Manella one on one with her defender. She cuts towards the middle. Shot. Goal! Nikki Manella, as she's falling, finally has the Hofstra Pride. They are able to beat Claire Mahoney. It is now 3-1 to one in favor of Brown, but 10 minutes, 19 seconds left in this half. Still plenty of time to get two more. Yeah, Mahoney was looking impressive there, but finally Nikki Manella gets the breakthrough with her eighth goal of the season, dipping around the defender, and that's what Hofstra needs to do. 
moving the ball around was not working as Mahoney's ball tracking was on point. They had to get creative, find a lane, create a lane on their own, and Manella did it on her own, cutting it into the middle, right into the slot as she was falling. A little bit of deception got the ball past Mahoney. It's now 3-1 in favor of Brown. Eighth goal of the season for Nikki Manella, and right after that, immediately saw Cordy Carollo for this Hofstra Pride team talking to head coach Shannon Smith and it looks like they're going to adjust how they go on these draw controls because she immediately came in and placed her players where she wanted them and she wins it back nearly picked away by a Hofstra teammate in Bryn Hepting but Hofstra is going to get it back off of a push there so Hepting will have it for the Pride. So that immediate adjustment pays dividends. Hofstra on the ball, a chance to cut the lead to one. And so still with it is Carrie Walzer. She backs over that midfield line and sends it over to Jackie Gaddy, who has a pass that nearly is dropped by Flannery, but she's able to collect it and send it to Katie Kelly, who on that far side, Hofstra written logo, will pass it over to Taylor Manella back behind the net. Manella coming to the near side, tries to spin off a defender, but she can't do anything with it, so she will pass it to her sister in Nikki Manella, but I'm not sure that that was her intended target as it looked like that was going to Megan Flannery. Nikki Manella still with it. She sends it over to Carrie Walzer. Walzer cutting towards the middle, but doesn't have anything, so she will just dish it over to Megan Flannery. Flannery slowing it down as she cuts from left to right, shot right into the waiting stick of Claire Mahoney. One of the easier saves that she's had to make, but she's made all of her saves so far look easy. But she has a missed pass there, is now fighting for it on both teams. No one can seem to get it, as finally Nikki Manella has it. And it looked like she took it off the stick of Katie Kelly. So Hofstra still with possession here, as Flannery has it for the Pride. Yeah, that's been the one flaw in Mahoney's game is playing the ball out from her crease. She's had some trouble finding her defenders to, to start the play up the field. Hofstra still with it. It's on the near side now and it's on the stick of Rachel Graff. Gets sent up top to where Nikki Manella is waiting as she looks to do it herself. Has a pick set by Walzer, but she could not get to that forehand. So she will pass it back to Walzer who will start up again. Pick again set by Manella is a shot off of the pole there of Mahoney and fighting for it in front and it's going to get taken away by Mahoney. Hofstra Pride having another offensive possession go by the wayside. It remains 3-1 to one with 8-10 left in this second quarter. Mahoney's positioning, it, it just can't be said enough. It's perfect. She didn't even have to move in net. The ball just found her the, the edge of her stick right there. I, you know, she was positioned in a perfect way where she didn't have to rely on her reflexes. Didn't have to move. The ball just finds her in the crease. Seven saves in the first half of your collegiate debut is not anything to... I would, I was, I want to say write home about, but that's what you do want yeah, to write exactly. home about. Especially with the short drive up to New Canaan from Hempstead. Is on the other side, it's still with Brown as he goes back behind the net where Mia Moscone has it for the Bears. She's trying to spin off the defender, shot, and she scores. She was one-on-one -on -one with Jackie Gaddy, who was moving across the crease, spun back, and just whipped a shot that looked like it caught Jess Smith completely off guard as it went into that lower left-hand corner. It's back to a three-goal lead for the Bears. It's 4-1 to one with 7.27. Yeah, you said it exactly right. That that move just really caught Smith off guard. Her reflex move didn't come in time. By the time she kicked her leg out, the ball was already rolling out of the back of the net. A great spin and a great play there for Brown. And now the lead is back up to three goals for the Bears. And we'll go back for another draw control. It's still going to be Courtney Carollo as she's going against Greta Cirque as that was Mia Moscone's second goal of the season, second goal of the game. As right now in draw controls, it is still 3-3. Brown has 13 fouls so far as opposed to Hofstra's six. Difference being a amount of goals scored as Hofstra is going to get it off of the draw. A ref deemed Hofstra, but judging by Courtney Carollo's reaction, it was not going to be a Hofstra ball as Taylor Manella is taken out. It's going to remain with Brown. But we got an argument here as Carollo is talking with one of the referees. Looks like they're going to 
meet for a conference. Yep, they're all three of them are convening here at midfield trying to sort out who this infraction is going to be assessed upon. It looked like uh, the Hofstra defender came crashing in. Let's see what the call is. I think it's going to stay with Brown. It's going to stay with Brown. I would say undeniably, Taylor Manella was taken out on that play. But it does. It came after the whistle, so I think that is the biggest reason. I think that was what right. the argument was. So Brown with it, taking it back behind the net is Jackie Mason for the Bears. She's going to flip it off to a teammate there, Sir Quig. So Brown still has a three-goal lead. They're looking to expand on that as we're going to have another free position shot as Annie Burton had a stick all over the back of her with Jackie Gaddy who got beat. So it's going to be on that far side middle hash mark. It's going to be taken by Annie Burton who has a goal in this one already. So she goes for the shot here. So Burton loads up for the shot, an easy save there by Just Smith, who has to go right into the pocket of that large goalie stick. And Hoff is going to go quickly the other way as it's on the stick of Jackie Gaddy, but she is caught up too quickly by Greta Sirquee. Yeah, but a good heads-up play there by Gaddy to spin off, not allowing Sirquee to, to catch her from behind completely. So Hofstra still has it, barely getting it over that midfield line, and they finally get over the restricted lines. It gets into the waiting stick of Rachel Graff. So Graff has one defender just all over her in Paige Gillen, but she will spin off as the pass goes to Nikki Manella, who then immediately goes to Megan Flannery. So Flannery, pass over to Carrie Walzer. Walzer cutting towards the middle as it goes to Graff. Graff can't handle it, and it's going to be taken back the other way quickly by Emmy Liao. And she still has it, takes over the midfield line, takes it over the restricted line. She has one teammate in Jeski, and she will pass it over to An. So slowing it down for Brown, back behind the net is Caputo. As right now the Bears are going to play very slow with it as it goes into the waiting stick of Mia Mascombe. And she directs traffic and sends it over to Ellie Udo. Udo with it, cutting towards the middle. As that shot goes wide, and it gets picked up there by Maddie Joyce. Joyce with it as she goes to Quig. As one defender in the area and Bryn Hepting is cutting down those passing lanes. As Sir Quee still has it, she will send it over to Muscone. Muscone taking it to the middle. She passes it to Maddie Joyce, and Joyce puts it in, but whistle goes well beforehand. It's going to be a free position shot for Brown, but a good find there as Joyce was wide open, spun one, just put it into the net. Yeah, Brown has been moving the ball very well, allowing the, tail, uh, the trailing players to get open on several occasions here in this one. Muscone's going to take it, shot. Kick save there by Jess Smith, but she can't find it. And she finally does, thanks to some help from a teammate in Trinity Reed. And she will get the outlet pass there, but she immediately is met by Mia Muscone. Yeah, great move by Smith there to shut that one down. Had to rely with some help from her friends to, to prevent the rebound from being slotted home. But still Hofstra on the ball here, but trying to get it, struggling to get it past midfield. Kendall Smith with it for the pride. She will send it over to Walzer. Walzer has some speed right now as she makes her way through six different Brown defenders and she's able to pass it off to Megan Flannery who will set up this offensive possession. Hofstra with four minutes, 20 seconds left in this half are going to need to find a way to make it a two or a three goal game. Or it is a three goal game. Need to make it a two goal game very quickly as it is four to one with four minutes left to play in this first half. So it's going to go back behind the net to Nikki Manella. As Hofstra bunches up towards the middle in between those two fans. It's Hofstra, they've really just struggled to get any kind of momentum going in the offensive end. Manella here behind the net. Can't find anyone to pass to. She'll take it herself. Takes it herself and she shoots it just over the net. And number nine. an early ruling there. I, I do not think that Hofstra should have possession there. It looked like Emmy Lau was able to beat Carrie Walzer back, but Carrie Walzer will take it. She does it herself. She's going towards the middle. Spins off shot just wide, but that's as the shot clock expires. So the Hofstra Pride are going to lose another offensive possession as they still trail by 4-1, to one and 
I wonder if they are deeming that that was a shot. The last one was a shot that hit off of Claire Mahoney or someone else, so they're going to reset the shot clock to 90. Oh, it's going to be a free position attempt. So it'll be started up by Taylor Manella, who will pass to her sister in Nikki Manella. So Manella will take it back behind the net as she has one defender shadowing her and Paige Gillen, who is just walking the perimeter of the crease. Manella cuts towards the middle, but she can't do anything, so she goes will backtrack, scanning the area. She still has Gillen all over her. She's trying to cut around. Shot and goal! What an individual effort there by Nikki Manella. She has just been on fire in these last few weeks as she slots that one top corner. It is now 4-2 in favor of Brown with 2 minutes 52 seconds left to play in this first half. Well, that's what you expect to see out of your offensive leader. Nikki Manella takes it herself, spin to create some room, and then a rocket of a shot off the stick into the net past the reach of Mahoney, and that cuts the deficit to two. It's four to two, Brown. Ian, I don't want to alarm you, but Nikki Manella is only a freshman. Yeah, she's she got, is, she's she's got done everything she needs to do for this option. Yeah, she's got outstanding talent right now, but just imagine what she's going to do as she ages up, as she progresses here in this Oscar Pride program. That was her ninth goal of the season, second goal of the game. And again, just has been a force to be reckoned with over these past few weeks. As we go back for another draw control still, it's going to be Courtney Carollo going up against Greta Sirqui. Yeah, but for Manella, you know, you, you think of freshmen, you think, you know, some of them, they aim to be Rookie of the Week. She's rocketed past that already. She's aiming for CAA Player of the Week every single week. Again, reigning CAA Player of the Week, looking to find a way to get that honor yet again. It is four to two in favor of Brown. 335 left to play in this first half and off of a another violation, Hofstra is gonna get possession. It goes right back to their offensive leader, Nikki Manella. Hofstra just trying to keep the pressure on here. Keep, keep Brown on their back foot. So Manella attempted to send a one in there but it's gonna get picked off and taken back the other way by Emmy Lau. The Lau on that far side, one-on-one -on -one with Gaddy, so she's going to have to spin off. And immediately, Hofstra just swarming, and Lau will get it back off of a pass there. So Lau takes it over that midfield line, and it goes over the restricted line, as that was a pass sent away by Bongiorno, as she found her teammate there in number 27, Leah Caputo. So back behind the net with Mia Moscone. Moscone fakes a pass, shot, and it just goes wide. Hofstra Pride and Jess Smith get away with one there as Mascuda was, or Mescone was wide open. Yep, and she just fired it wide. She had the space in front of net, but kind of thought she had, didn't have as much time as she really had. Fired the shot in a little bit of hurried fashion, and it went wide of the cage. Hofstra, though, on the back end, hustle play to get possession. Bryn Hepting gets it over the both restricted and midfield line as Lauren Coletti now has it for this Hofstra Pride team. She is being harassed there by a Brown defender and Julian Balgunas. As a rest whistle will blow and it still remains with the Pride and Lauren Coletti as she will send a long pass there to the waiting stick of Jackie Gaddy who immediately sends it over to Megan Flannery. So Flannery over to the corner there at Carrie Walzer. As we have just under 1 minute 50 seconds left to play in this first half. Hofstra need to take advantage of this offensive possession as Nikki Minella thought about taking it to the far side, but she will settle down behind the net. Has an option there in Carrie Walzer, but she will slowly run it to the far sideline there, and she immediately just gets a cross check from Paige Gillen. So it'll be a free position attempt for the Pride. It's a bit of an awkward angle on the hash mark on that far side. It still is going to be with Nikki Manella who will take it as the ref will talk to the defender for Brown as Claire Mahoney bangs both of her goal posts. It's going to be right now for this free position attempt. Freshman versus freshman as Mahoney will go up against Nikki Manella. Manella takes it back behind the net very slowly as she still goes one on ones. Takes it to that interior fan, spins off. Flag is going to be up, and it's going to be pride ball, free position attempt. Coach 
Shannon Smith runs onto the field, wants to make sure that the refs know that that's not going to go back in favor of Brown. As she, the, the flag was up for a while before yeah. that. Coach Smith has been pretty animated over there on the sideline. She's been storming off of that blue uh, blue sideline over towards the green of the field several times here as she's currently crouched over, kind of yelling at the officials, wanting an explanation. Maybe she wants the uh, she wants an explanation of the play here. Well, right now for the pride. The flag was up, so it's going. it looks like we're going to have a free position shot with Nikki Manella taking it on the near side middle hash mark. There's 18.4 seconds left to play in this first half. And no, it's not going to go in Hofstra's favor as the play will be started up there by Emmy Lau. So that explains why Coach Smith was... Uh you know, in the official's ear over there on the sideline, wanting to know why that's not Hofstra ball. Well, five seconds left to play in this half as Hofstra just trying to find a way to not let Lydia Bongiorno get across that midfield line, and they do, and that'll do it for the first half of play between the Brown Bears and the Hofstra Pride, and through one half, it has been all Brown in favor of or they have a lead of four to two. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we will have a recap of the first half of play, and we'll get you ready for second half between Brown and Hofstra. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Women's Lacrosse, presented by 88.7 FM WRHU. Welcome back to James M. Stewart Stadium. Here is we are in halftime of this game between the Hofstra Pride and the Brown Bears. Once again, my name is Jack Carthy, joined alongside by Ian Banke. And through one half, I mean, it's it's a close game. Hofstra has the advantage in total shots, total shots on goal. But if we're going to start with just one player to talk about, it's going to be Claire Mahoney, the goalkeeper, the freshman goalkeeper for this Brown team who has just been standing on our head so far in this one. Uh, she's made a huge impression in that, you know, don't know exactly where the where the bar was for her in her first collegiate game as a freshman here for for Brown, but wherever it was, she's far exceeded it. A 778 save percentage on seven saves after that first half of play. She's been extremely impressive. Her positioning has been top notch. She's taken away a lot of difficult angles for the Hofstra shooters, and her reflexes have been on point as well. Really, the only fault in her game has been clearing her own zone, trying to connect with her defenders, but that's more of a, a fault of communication, just trying to get on the same page with her teammates, but when it's come to stopping the Hofstra attackers, she's been nearly unstoppable in that. And from one freshman to another one is Nikki Minnell as the two goals for this Hofstra Pride team. She's looked good. She's looked good over the last few weeks for this Hofstra Pride team. Obviously, she's coming off of a player of the week in the CAA, but they're going to need a lot more, not from her, but they're going to need a lot more from the rest of this team. Yeah, for Manella, she's already set a new career high in shots. She's had seven. Her previous career high was six against Vanderbilt her last time out. So it's only taken her one half to exceed uh, that total. But then you look down at the rest of the roster. Outside of Walzer, who has five shots, there's only two outside of that, one by each Flannery and Graf. So it, it's going to be up to the rest of the Hofstra attackers to step up and, and help out Manella in the attacking end. She's the only one with points. She has the two goals that she's really created by herself. So it's going to be up to this Hofstra team to chip in, to help out. It's not going to be up to, to Manella. It's, it's going to be the rest of the team that has to chip in and help her out. It's not going to be one player. It has to be the entire team that helps break down this brick wall of Mahoney in that. Oh, before we go to break here, we'll do a quick stat read. Hofstra has 14 total shots as opposed to Brown's 11. Nine of those shots for Hofstra have gone on goal, while Brown has seven shots on goal. It's 7-7 in terms of shots on goal for Brown and saves for their freshman starting goalie, Claire Mahoney. On the other side, Jess Smith has made three saves. Both teams have four draw controls. Brown has 15 fouls as opposed to Hofstra's 10. Hofstra has, is 0 for 2 on free position shooting attempts. Brown is 1 for 4. Both teams have 8 clearing attempts. Hofstra has only done that in 10 as opposed to Brown's 11. Both teams have 11 turnovers and Hofstra has caused 4 total turnovers. 
And we're going to take one final break. When we come back, we will have the opening draw control to the second half between the Hofstra Pride and the Brown Bears. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Women's Across, presented by Flow Sports and 88.7 FM WRHU. Welcome back to James M. Short Stadium as we are just about to start up the second half of play between the Hofstra Pride and the Brown Bears. Once again, my name is Jack McCarthy, joined alongside by Ian Banky. Ian, Hofstra has the shot advantage. They have the shots on goal advantage. They don't have the goals advantage. So... What is the key to this second half if you're Hofstra? They've got to activate that scoring depth. I mean, we look at the the Vanderbilt game. They had a lot of players contribute to the offensive attack, but in this one, it's been exclusively Nicky Manella that's been able to get on the board. So in this one, they have to share the wealth offensively. Manella has been great. And on the other side, if you are Brown, you're up by two. You're playing in your first game of the season. You've looked really good for a majority of it. What do you have to do to make sure that Hofstra does not have the opportunity to get any comebacks? Lean on what your your strengths are. So far, it's been that defense that's been strong. It's been suffocating. Manella's been able to break it down, but that's just one player. If one player gives you trouble, that's fine. You can double team or you can shut that down. Just keep on doing what you're doing, and Brown will be able to go on to victory here tonight. So getting ready for opening draw control here for the Hofstra Pride. It'll be Courtney Carollo going against Emmy Lau as Lau will win it up to herself, and she will take it back the other way. Slightly loses it as there was a good stick there by Carollo, but does not get it as Brown will take it. So Hofstra in this quarter will be moving from right to left. Brown will be moving from left to right. Hofstra is in their home white jerseys with blue lettering and numbering and gold trim, while Brown is in their away brown jerseys with white lettering and numbering and a red trim. So good immediate play there for the Hofstra Pride and Bryn Hepting as they get a defensive possession to turn into offense. As getting tripped up there was Kate Fiola. Yeah, Hofstra just leading that charge immediately off of the turnover forced by Hepting, but now force here finally crossing that, that line and getting into the attacking zone. Megan Flannery nearly takes it all the way towards the net, but she's going to lose it, and he gets picked up and taken back the other way by Paige Gillen of the Brown Bears. Flag was on the field, but it looks like it got picked up by a referee, and Brown takes it back. So they will slow it down as it goes into the waiting stick there of Claire Jeske. So Jeske just directing traffic as she will send it across to Andy Burton. So both teams right now have had an offensive possession. The Prides was a little bit less than Brown's as it goes back behind the net. So Brown still with it to get sent up top to a waiting 33, and that is Mia Moscone. Moscone has two goals on the afternoon, and there is the hat trick goal for Moscone and Brown. They are up by five, or they're up five to two, as there is 13 minutes, 19 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And Osha's got to find a way to get back on the scoreboard. And yeah, Moscone's shot has been great there. A long range try that time from the exterior. Just fired it low. A shot that Smith might not have seen in net. Just kind of snuck through her. And now Brown back out to a three goal lead. That's Moscone's third goal of the afternoon. Seventh shot so far. As again, it is five to two in favor of the visiting Brown Bears. And for Hofstra right now, this is where it's going to start. You've got to get a win here from Courtney Carollo, and you've got to get on offense and have some sort of offensive attack in mind. You just have to get the wheels turning in the right direction. Yes, playing strong defense is a good way to start the offense, but if you don't have the ball, it's very hard to score. So waiting for the ref's official go-ahead as it is now 5-4 to four in favor of Brown for draw controls as that one gets knocked up where Carollo is able to pick it up. Ref whistle will blow, but it will be Hofstra's ball as Carollo will spin out and pass to a teammate there in Megan Flannery. Flannery trying to find something, but she can't do it until Katie Kelly makes herself available and a long aerial pass gets to her. It's going to be Hofstra ball off a ref whistle as Kelly was tripped up and she will immediately pass over to Kerry Walzer. Walzer sends it to Flannery as it goes to the far side of the field where Taylor Manella is, and she will pass it 
to her younger sister in Nikki Manella. 60 seconds left on the shot clock. Hofstra needs to find a way. Another player for the pride here in Nikki Manella who has two goals on the afternoon as she cuts her way back behind the net. She stands there with Walzer for a second before Walzer clears out. So Manella still with it on the far side. She spins off of the defender but barely avoids getting into the crease. Pass in the middle, shot and scores! Chloe Sendler scores for the Hofstra Pride, makes it a two-goal game once again. It is 5-3 in favor of Brown. 12 minutes, 19 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And that's just what the doctor ordered. You needed someone else to step up for this Hofstra Pride offense. It wasn't going to be Manella that would do all the heavy lifting. And finally that time, Chloe Sedler steps up, slots one home, and the deficit is back to two. And that's going to be an assist there for Nikki Manella. So, so she, she's still involved she's one still way or another. She still finds her way to be involved. She now has three points on the afternoon. Is Again, she has been huge. That's her fourth assist of the season to go along again with those two goals. She now has 13 points on the young campaign. So back for the draw control here is Courtney Carollo is still going against Emmy Lau. As we're back to five to five, no team has really been able to get a huge advantage in favor of draw controls. And Hofstra is going to get a benefit there as it looks like Eliudo was not off the field in time. So Hofstra gets the, or the draw control win off a of violation. Yeah, that's just a, you know, a mental lapse there from Brown. And yeah, that's, again, just something that Hofstra has to take advantage of. And looks like we have a green card right now. So that's huge for the Hofstra Pride as we're waiting for these refs to d discuss. But one ref has put up a green card. So we wait to see who it is. It's going to be Jeski who will be guilty, gets that green card against her. We still are waiting for the refs to talk to the scorers table. So Hofstra, in the end, will get the ball. It's going to start with Carrie Walzer for the pride. She makes a quick pass. She's going to have Lauren Coletti wide open on that far side. Yep, now it's all up to, to Hofstra again to just take advantage of this. Another miscue here by Brown. And now they move into the attacking zone. So right now with it for the Pride is Walzer. She will pass it over to Katie Kelly. And it goes back behind the net to Taylor Manella. Manella to Kelly. Pass. Shot. Scores. It's a one-goal game once again. Hofstra Pride connect there as it's another Manella getting in on the action. As she passes to Katie Kelly. And Kelly slots it home. It is now 5-4, to four, just under 12 minutes left to play in the quarter. Now pretty much on cue, the other players are starting to step up in this offense. First it was Sedler, but now it's Katie Kelly stepping in right in front of net, taking the pass. And in front of net, she had no mistake there. Just instantly, on instinct, just firing it home. It's now a one-goal game. Well, what a play for the Hofstra Pride as they make it a one-goal game and if you're Hofstra, for Katie Kelly, that's her fourth goal of the season, fifth assist of the season for Taylor Manella. They need to find a way to capitalize. They have the momentum here, but they have to get a tying goal here as Jeschke is released. So it will be even strength once again after that goal because we are still waiting for the ref's official go-ahead and getting explanations to both coaches. You go back to that draw control still. It's going to be Emmy Lau going up against Courtney Carollo. Hofstra has the lead in draw controls at 5-6, to six, but as previously mentioned, it's always been one team gets that one draw control lead and the other one immediately wins it right back. So Ref still waiting for the official go-ahead is... We get posturing on the outside there. It's going to be a false start. Hofstra is going to get possession there. That is a huge break for this Pride team as Carrie Walzer will pick it up for this Pride team. She has Nikki Manella with her, but she will opt to pass it. Not to Megan Flannery, but instead to Chloe Sedler. A couple of draw controls in a row here, won by the Pride, and that's allowed them to get right back in this one. So Taylor Manella had the assist on that 
Last goal by Katie Kelly. She now has it. She's trying to get something, but she gets pushed away, and she's going to whip a pass over to Carrie Walzer. Walzer shimmies to her left and goes right, but she can't do anything. Goes back towards her right. She's standing in the middle of that off offensive zone, but she will send it over to Megan Flannery. Flannery goes back behind the net where Nikki Manella is waiting for it. So she will start as she's been going one-on-one -on -one with the same defender in Gillen as that shot will go wide. Hofstra retain possession as Carrie Walzer has it. Good look there. Just a shot a little bit too hot to handle for it to reach the net. Walzer trying to spin off her defender. She can't get anything, so she'll send it up top to Nikki Manella. Manella back to Walzer. Walzer shot. Great save there by Claire Mahoney. She has not had any saves so far in this third quarter. But she finally gets one, and it remains a one-goal game. Mahoney coming up with the big stop when she was needed. A couple of tough ones to see go by her if you're a Brown fan. But that one, in a big way, keeps Brown in the lead. Bounce pass there is bobbled, and both teams fighting for possession. No one can get the ground ball pickup. Hofstra still has it. Can't get it. No one gets anything. Refs are going to deem it. Hofstra ball. Trinity Reed was in there. Kerry Walzer was involved. And Trinity Reed will scoop it up, and she passes to Walzer before she goes back over that restricted line. So Hofstra with another offensive possession, and that is the third failed clearance, or not third, that is the fourth failed clearance for this Brown team. Hofstra has done a great job at limiting the clearances for this Brown team. So on the far side, it's with Taylor Manella. She has a pass, and she will take it and carry Walzer. So Hofstra will start up from the top. Walzer cutting in, gets that interior fan, but has nothing towards net. So she goes back behind the net to Lauren Coletti. Coletti back to Walzer. Walzer goes to Coletti. Shot, and it just ticks off the side there of Claire Mahoney's stick. What a shot attempt by Carrie Walzer. Mahoney makes her second save of this half, and it goes back up top to Nikki Manella, who slows it down. It was a very good look. Just a nice last-second flick of the stick and a save by Mahoney. So Nikki Manella still with it. She's still. Paige Gillen has been all over. Shot over the net. Hofstra back there is Katie Kelly. They are going to keep possession. 37 seconds left on the shot clock. Nine minutes flat. Pass in the middle. Shot off the post. And it's going to be a free position shot for the Hofstra Pride. But Megan Flannery was wide open. And she sends it off of the near side post. Yeah, she was one-on-one -on -one in on Mahoney. But she just fired it off the post, and that was something we saw in the men's game earlier. A lot of sh shots fired off of the iron. And now this one, likewise, going off of the post. So not, not only off the iron, it's been off this far yeah, side this net, far too. It's, I, there's something about they gotta. There's something in the ball that I think is having <laughs> it be attracted to the post. Who we'll put a magnet in yeah. there? Nonetheless, for the Hofstra Pride, it's going to be Megan Flannery who will have the free position attempt for... The team. So still waiting for the ref's official go-ahead as Flannery will put the ball back on the turf. She's cradling it on the far on that left side. She's crossing her body as the refs will get the right players in the right areas. Crossing her body again on the left side. She's moving in, shot, and she scores! We're tied back up at five! And the Hofstra Bride have gotten Three goals to open up the third quarter. What a goal from Megan Flannery. That is their first successful free position goal of the afternoon. It's 5-5, five to 8-53 five, in the third quarter. Well, three goals here in this second half. All three goals by three different goal scorers. That's the depth scoring coming in for the Hofstra Pride. This time, it's Megan Flannery getting in on the fun. Her second goal of the season, first of the game. And now Hofstra has knotted this one up at five. That is something that you pointed out to being a huge aspect to this second half that the Hofstra Pride wanted to get back into it was get that depth scoring up. And as you said, three goals, three different goal scorers. And Hofstra now with another draw control win, they have a chance to take their first lead of the afternoon. Just keep the wheels moving in the right direction if you're the Hofstra Pride. And winning this draw would keep that momentum in your favor. So draw control one up, and it is easily looked in the stick there by Claire Jeschke. And Brown will have their first offensive possession in what seems like a few minutes now. So Caputo with it, back behind the net. She sends it up top, and she holds it, actually. And she has the option there to go to Moscone, but she will back it off to that far side 
Hofstra A. So still with it is Leah Caputo, as she will send it over to Natalie Ahn. Ahn sends it over to Jeschke, as Jeschke has a pick set for her, but she's not going to use it. She cuts towards the net, shot, and it just wide, goes wide of the net. And that is a that is not a smart decision there, a bit of a lapse in judgment as Leah Caputo went up to try and catch that ball with one hand rather than just stand where she was because she was basically out of bounds. But because she couldn't reel it in, it goes out of bounds. Hofstra is going to get possession. Just another mental lapse there by Brown. And that's something that, you know, frustration can build after not having the ball for a long time in the offensive zone. Small mistakes like that can slip into your gameplay. Hofstra has it on the far side. They pass it. And Taylor Manella goes to her sister in Nikki Manella. As Nikki has been the catalyst on offense for the Pride, but she's going to lose it there. Can't pick it up cleanly, but she finally gets it. She has two defenders all over, so she's going to send it to Katie Kelly. Caught out of bounds or off guard there are the Brown Bears, but Hofstra can't get one there as Taylor Manella is still trying to find it. She picks it up with one hand on the stick, and she will send it to Jackie Gaddy as refs whistle will blow. Hofstra is going to retain possession off of that ref signal, but they had a chance, especially once Nikki Manella had two defenders caught way out of position, but they could not get a clean pass to Taylor Manella. Yeah, it was a good recovery by Brown to, to cover up for that double team. But now Hofstra with 17 on the shot clock, trying to get something on net here. Flannery with it for the pride. Refs will blow. Hofstra is going to keep, or they will lose possession correction as... They have an offensive session go by the wayside. Still 5-5, five to five, 6 minutes, 50 seconds left to play. And Brown will start it up here as they pass it across the field to Lydia Bongiorno. Bongiorno sends one quickly. Maddie Joyce now has it. Quick passing here. Ellie Udo has it for Brown. Quick Again, quick passing for Udo has a stumble and she will pass over to Mia Moscone. And... Looks like we're going to have a timeout here for Brown. That'll be their first timeout that any team has taken so far in this one. It's still 5-5 five to five in favor of, or it's 5-5 five to five in favor of no one. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will have the rest of the third quarter of action between the Hofstra Pride and the Brown Bears. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Women's Lacrosse, presented by Flow Sports and 88.7 FM WRHU. Well, welcome back to James M. Schuert Stadium as again, Brown just called a recent timeout. They still have possession. It is 5-5, five to five, 6.30 left on the clock as we get back to game action. As it's still with the Bears. Great whipping shot there by number 33, Mia Moscone, but an even better save by Jess Smith as that is her first save of the this second half, so Hofstra goes back on offense. And that was a huge save for Smith, a rising shot that kind of snuck up on her, but she got the stick to it, able to snag it. Now Hofstra able to move on the attack. Coletti able to get on the end of a long pass, and she will send it as Megan Flannery now has it for the pride. Sent to the far side in Taylor Manella, as she will take it to that corner, has a teammate, but it's a far pass. You can go to Nikki Manella. She goes a little closer, and she makes the pass easily. So now Nikki Manella has it. She surveys her options, and she will just opt to use her legs. She goes in, shot, scores! What a goal there from Nikki Manella, able to shoot as she falls away from goal. She's been going one-on-one -on -one with Paige Gillen all afternoon, and so far the freshman has the advantage, and the Hofstra Pride have the advantage. It's 6 to 5, 5 30 in the third quarter. Well, tip your cap to Nikki. That's the hat trick for Nikki Manella. The third goal of the game for the freshman. She's been so impressive here. That was her first goal, though, of the second half. She let her teammates do a little bit of the work to get back in it, but then when it came to who was going to get the go-ahead goal, who else but Nikki Manella to get the pride back out in front, their first lead here in this game. Their first lead of the afternoon. Nikki Manella now has double-digit goals on the season. That's number 10. And for the Pride, again, that's their first lead that they've gotten. They have fought back. This was a 5-2 to two game at one point in this quarter, but they have answered. They have now have four goals. And 
That is their four, fourth different goal scorer of the quarter. Granted, not their fourth different goal scorer of the afternoon as Nella has the hat trick. So draw control, one back, but no one can get on the end of it until jumping up and swatting out of the air was Lydia Borgiono. But she can't get it cleanly as they make a pass attempted there to number 16, Julia Ford. She has to jump, but she can't catch it as she fights back and forth. It's going to be Hofstra Ball. Great defensive play there by Brent Hefting to not let that get picked up cleanly by Julia Ford. Hofstra's going to take it back the other way. Hefting has been so good in the midfield to defensive end. She's been so responsible picking up those loose balls on the ground and uh, allowing the pride to move from defense to offense. Reed gets it over that restricted line with the pass to Megan Flannery, who then passes to Kerry Walzer. Walzer over to Nick Minnell, the most recent goal scorer for this Hofstra pride team. Flannery settles her stick on that right shoulder as she again surveys. Hofstra has a bunch on that far side. Had a cutter there, but couldn't get it as the cutter was Coley Sedler. Pass in the middle, and it just goes over the net, but we're going to have a whistle. And for the Hofstra Pride, it'll be a free position attempt. It'll be taken by Megan Flannery. Yeah, Flannery did a great job there, working her defender, getting around and inside. And then the defender had no choice but just kind of reach in and hold her back, leading to this free shot. So it'll be a free position attempt here for Hofstra Pride and Megan Flannery. Flannery has a chance to get her second goal of the afternoon and make this a 7-5 game in favor of the Pride. So she cuts in, gets there, and a good defensive stick check there by Brown in number 29, Paige Gillen. But Hofstra is going to get it back. Nick Gillen's been the star on defense. She's been the, the player that the Pride have also targeted the most, which is the reason why she's been so involved here in the back half. Well, Gillen has been marking on Nikki Manella for a majority of this game as goes back behind the net to Taylor Manella. She had a pass to Nikki, but not clear enough for her liking, so she takes it back behind the net. And she is immediately marked, so she will pass it up to Megan Flannery. Flannery sends one across the field to Nikki Manella as she directs traffic and she will go one-on-one -on -one with Gillen. Takes a shot, just goes wide, but another good attempt at cutting the goalie as recently and a quick pass out there to just try and see if they can beat the shot clock is set and Hofstra's going to lose possession, but a good job there. And is they got a free position attempt? No, no, no free position attempt there. It was Oddly with the way they rolled the ball there and the way that Hofstra had still bunched around that hash mark. But it's going to be taken back the other way by Brown as they get it up over that midfield line. And Brown, a good defensive possession there, but now an open lane here on the attack. Julia Ford with it for the Bears. She will step off and pass over to Burton. Burton goes back behind the net to Caputo. Caputo has one defender on her in Hepting. And she will take it to the far side out in front of the net and she sends it up top to Camphausen. Camphausen still looking over her option. She cuts it towards the middle, but she will back out and pass over to Jeske. Jeske's still with it. She spins off. As Hofstra's doing a great job at cutting down these passing lanes, so she will send out up top to Julia Ford. Ford has one defender, Kate Fiola, on her. As she goes in, shot, and she scores. We are tied back up at six. Two minutes, 30 seconds left in this third quarter. And Hofstra has a bit of a defensive breakdown there. Yep, a little bit of a defensive breakdown, but still credit to Julian Balkunas on that bounce shot. Bounce right in front of the netminder, Smith, and the bounce was, was a tricky one right underneath the stick. Nothing that Jess Smith could do. Now we're right back to a tie game, knotted up at six. Rather, excuse me, the, the goal is going to go to Julia Ford. A Julia Ford goal, and that's her first goal of the afternoon. As we go back for a draw control, Emmy Lau will have it going up against Courtney Carollo. She's been, or those two have been the big draw controls for this game as we are tied back up in that department at seven. That's been one of the areas, despite the score, that has been one of the areas where both these teams have been deadlocked. And it's going to be a false start against Emmy Lau. Hofstra is going to get possession there. Same thing last time we saw that false start. It was won pretty cleanly by Courtney Carollo. Mm -hmm. 
a couple times there that Lau has jumped the gun. Hofstra have been able to take advantage once. Let's see if they can do it again. Kelly roll, runs it over that restricted line, and she will slow it down and pass it to Megan Flannery. Flannery holding it on that right shoulder of hers as she uses her free hand to direct traffic. Pass over to Graf as Graf cuts it towards from far side to near. She sends a pass over to Coletti. Coletti goes to Nikki Manella. Nikki Manella cutting towards the middle. Shot off the crossbar. What a shot again by Nikki Manella. She just does not get that fourth goal of the game, but she's going to get back in a she not only gets the shot off, but she keeps the pride with possession as she immediately passes to Flannery off the restart. Outstanding hustle by Manella to get the ball back. Flannery goes over to Taylor Manella as Manella will pass it over to Walzer. Walzer over to a teammate in Graf as she surveys all of her options and she's going to find one but can't get a clean pass. Her intended target was Megan Flannery. Ball is going to go out of bounds. Hofstra probably will lose possession as Sophia Rucker We'll pick it up for the Bears. A yeah, miscue on that pass, but just want to go to that back to that shot once again. Another shot off that uh, the crossbar to our to our left here. Just something is up with that goal. I don't know if it is that or just a bit of miscalculations for both Hofstra Pride men's and women's lacrosse teams. But it has been all of their shots have hit off that the post of that net. So Brown back on the other side is Jackie Mason. She will pass it over to Jeski. Jeski goes back behind the net where she'll find Leah Caputo. Caputo still one-on-one -on -one with Bryn Hepting. As there's 30 seconds left on the game clock, we're still tied at six. Pass gets bobbled a little bit and wrestles will blow. Hofstra will not get possession as Mia Muscone will start up for Brown. 15 seconds left. Muscone fakes a shot before she cuts towards the net, but she will button hook off. Pens a pass in the middle. Shot and scores. Maddie Joyce will have that goal for Brown. They now lead 7-6 to six with just over 10 seconds left to play in this third quarter. And Hofstra will trail yet again. Well, Joyce's name wasn't one that we said a lot uh, earlier on in this broadcast, but that doesn't matter now. She's got the go-ahead goal for Brown as time was winding down. Like 10.3 left to go here in quarter number three, but Joyce said, that's enough time for me. She slots one home, and Brown has their noses out in front. It's 7-6. to six. Well, it's just over 10 seconds left to play in this quarter. Hofstra is now back down in this one. Still, they have a chance to get a quick win. They're going to change up draw controls again as it's going to be Greta Sirqui going against Courtney Corolla. So both teams are going to line up behind Sirqui as it looks like Hofstra now starting to get some movement as Bryn Hepting will start running. Corolla will win the draw control and she gets her own possession. Five seconds left. Hepting's got to move quickly. She passes to Walzer. Walzer can't cleanly get that one as the horn will sound, and that'll do it for three quarters of action between the Hofstra Pride and the Brown Bears, where Brown leads at a score of 7-6. to six. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will have the final frame of action between Hofstra and Brown. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Women's Lacrosse, presented by 88.7 FM, WRHU, and Flow Sports. Welcome back here to James M. Stewart Stadium for Hofstra Women's Lacrosse. Alongside Jack McCarthy, I'm Ian Binky. We're set to go for the fourth and final quarter of regulation here between the Brown Bears and the Hofstra Pride. Brown leads 7-6. to six. Jack McCarthy taking us home the rest of the way. Here thank, we go. Thank you very much, Ian. And again, for the Hofstra Pride, it's down by one. You're in a better spot than you were going in right. to this half. You, you're down by one right now. Your offense is starting to click, but you got to cut down on some of those miscommunications. You now have 15 total turnovers in this one. And as the sirens start to blare here, getting ready for the fourth quarter of action, the final quarter of action between these two teams. Once again, Hofstra is trying to continue their hot start to the season. They are 2-0. Brown is looking to open up their season with a win as that face or that draw control is won back and taken the other way by Brown. But lost immediately and Hofstra going to take it quickly. Good job by Trinity Reed to find that loose ball 
and run up before she spins back and passes to Jackie Gaddy. A good response there to losing the opening draw control, but now an immediate turnover. Gaddy's going to lose it, and then she's going to get in it, and it's going to be brown ball still, but that is an unfortunate turn of events there for this Hofstra Pride team. Is They had a quick transition looking, and then Jackie Gaddy got a little bit lazy, and a heads-up play by Mia Moscone, who got her stick in to disrupt this play as it starts up with El Udo. Brown still with it. It goes back behind the net. As going out front. Shot and scores. It's number 26, Annie Burton. That's her second goal of the game. And Brown back up by two. Is Burton able to go from back to front and slot that one home? Two goals lead for Brown. It is 8-6, 14-03 in the fourth quarter. Burton took it on the wraparound. She got the netminder Smith going around in circles in her crease found herself all alone out in front. All she had to do was just find some open net and she did. Key first goal here in the fourth quarter to take a two goal lead for the Bears. That is a very important first goal for Brown to get is get it back to a two goal lead. Hofstra again did have a lead earlier in that third quarter but now they have given up three straight goals to make it eight to six in favor of the Bears. He's back for that draw control. It's going to be Emmy Lau going against Courtney Carollo. So still waiting for the ref's official go-ahead to play again. As for Hofstra, 16 turnovers. That was a cause turnover against them as that ball goes up and it's jumped, fighting for that ground ball, and it's easily picked up by Emmy Lau and. Brown will take it back on offense with a chance to make it three. And Brown just, especially here late, just trying to keep the pressure on. And a drop ball there, still fighting for it and picking it up was Mia Moscone as she has a defender in Jackie Gaddy near her. So Gaddy is marking up Moscone. The Moscone spins off, trying to get her way towards the front of the net. She does, but doesn't have a shooting lane. Still trying to find something as she gets a shot. It's going to go wide, I think off of a tip. And as her stick was hit as she made that shot attempt, so Hofstra's going to get possession, and they'll take it back the other way. But Kate Fiola had to go one-on-one -on -one with the defender. She's going to use her speed, fakes a pass. She's got to make a pass at some point. She now has Eliudo all over her. She goes over the restricted line and just barely avoids stepping out of bounds as Udo has to step away as that ref's whistle will go. Hofstra has it on the stick of Katie Kelly on the far side. Fiola just completely flipping the field there by herself. So now she'll head off for a change, but great play by one of the team captains there, flipping the field for Hofstra. Hofstra has it on the stick of Nikki Manella, looking for her fourth goal of the game, and it is saved easily by Claire Mahoney, as that is her 10th save of the afternoon. She has looked great in her collegiate debut. That she has. She's looked very comfortable in that as well. Uh, nearly no nerves, as we can tell from up here in the booth. Uh, Brown gets it over that restricted line and into the Hofstra defensive zone as it's going to go back behind the net. So Brown will slow it down as it gets into the stick of Claire Jeski as she will send a long pass up to Jackie Mason. Mason has one defender near her, Kate Fiola, so she will pass it over to her teammate in number 27, Leah Caputo. Caputo cutting towards the middle but doesn't have anything, so she will spin it back to Jeski. Jeski goes to Caputo. Caputo loads up for a shot, but Hefting was all over her, so it's going to be a stoppage of play. Hofstra's going to get ball there. I didn't really see much. Was it something behind the play? It might have been, but either way, Hofstra will take it. They get the ball. They need something here off of this possession. Especially down by two, you will take all of the openings that you can get as Hofstra gets it over that midfield line. It's on the stick now of Megan Flannery as she cuts over a few defenders. She has a lane towards the net, but just doesn't have the speed left with her to get it, so she will spade it off to Katie Kelly. Kelly sends one up to Carrie Walzer as Coach Shannon Smith will make her way towards that offensive end of the field. Walzer still with it, takes it to that perimeter, goes to the interior fan, but she gets three defenders all over, and she will lose it with the ground ball being picked up by Emmy Lau. So Lau will send one to number 29, Paige Gillen, as she drops it, 
then sends one that was nearly picked off, but Julia Ford is able to get on the end of it, and she will run over the midfield line, over the restricted line, as she has a lane towards the net. She fakes a shot, fake, takes the shot, and then she scores. So Julia Ford takes it nearly the full length of the field, and she makes it a three-goal game. It is now 9-6, to six, 10 minutes, 57 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. Outstanding individual effort there by Ford. She just picked the ball up, evaded the defenders, went around two or three Austria defenders by herself, found a lane and just took it. Didn't hesitate one moment. If she did, there would have been no goal there for Brown, but she took the initiative, and that's going to lead to a timeout here for Hofstra. Yeah, timeout called by the Hofstra Pride, and Coach Smith needs to find some way. You can see she was very animated after that goal with her offensive unit, and you're down by three. You're now starting to stumble a little bit. You had that really hot third quarter, and... You have not been able to find it. You had a few missteps, and it's instead of finding a way to get back on the scoreboard, they just have not been able to really regain their footing. Yeah, I mean, that, that was something that I took out of the uh, the Vanderbilt game, that this Hofstra team is, is a very streaky offense. You get three goals in a row, you get a, you know, a couple of hot streaks, and uh, they had one heading into the, uh, the, into the third where they took the lead, but uh, since then they've gone cold. They went up from up six to five to now allowing four straight down nine to six. And they're really in need of that one goal scoring run. And that all starts, uh, you know, from, from the draw, from, from the draw controls. Trying to get that possession, starting from midfield. Starting from the back is one way, but if you could cut off half the field immediately after the goal and just start from midfield, that cuts off so much time and so much effort that you have to get around of this Brown defense that's really been locked up tight for most of the game today. And not only that, they've just had a great performance from Claire Mahoney in this one. She has stood on her head and does not look like the freshman that her no. class standing tells her. Yeah, she's looked... I mean, she she has honors as an All-American uh, in her high school days at New Canaan High School, and, and that's transitioned right here to the D1 collegiate level. So props to that New Canaan program for preparing her so well here to make that jump and look extremely comfortable in the process. She's from that FCAC powerhouse as to go against teams like Danbury, like Staples. Trumbull, Connecticut is a sneaky good team in the FCAC. It is just, that is one of the hardest conferences for high High school lacrosse for both men's and women's and it's no surprise that she's been able to come out of that and really star in this one but for Hofstra they got to find a way to beat her make her look like a freshman because again she has not looked like a freshman all game right and, the, and part of that is just just firing balls on net testing her doesn't necessarily have to be the uh, the perfect shot that's going to beat her. It's going to be you know the screen shots, the, the falling away shots, the deceptive moves that are going to elude this very comfortable net miner. As you go back for another draw control here as the siren's going and it's going to be one back towards the Hofstra area and it's going to be picked up by Emmy Lau. So Lau has two defenders on her, but that is not a good sign for the Hofstra Pride. They have lost three straight draw controls, and now Brown has another offensive possession with a chance to make it four. Especially late here in the game, just the more time spent in the offensive zone is more time for uh, more time off the clock for this Brown team, less time that they have to spend uh, worrying about a Hofstra comeback. Well, 60 seconds left on the shot clock. It's back behind the net with Mia Moscone as she has Gaddy on her. Moscone taking it from back to front, looking for a shot. She spins off towards her left, and she will go back behind the net again. Good job by Jackie Gaddy and the rest of the Hofstra Pride defense to not let a shot or a pass come off of that as it goes to Carly Camphausen. Gaddy, a great job one-on-one -on -one there right in the slot. Camphausen taking it to that interior fan, but she will spin off and pass to Julia Ford who has scored in this one. So Ford over to Jeski. As Jeski cuts towards her left, looks for a shot, and she finds it. Five hole on Jess Smith. It's now a four goal game as Carly Jeski makes it 10 to six. Nine minutes, 45 seconds left to play in the game. 
and for Brown, everything that's going that could go right has gone right here in the fourth quarter. Three straight goals out of the break to to really bust this one open late. And then for Hofstra, you have to win this draw. You have to get something immediately to stop the bleeding. If they want to have a comeback in this one, they need to stop this momentum from wearing well Brown Brown. Well. Apart from three goals to start out this fourth quarter, Brown has scored five straight as they have now opened up a four-goal lead. Once again, just a few short game minutes ago, it was a 6-5 to five game in favor of the Hofstra Pride, but they have not been able to get their footing back on offense, and they have struggled at times on defense as we go back for another draw control. Just shows you how quickly this game can change. As that is won again by Emmy Lau, but Hofstra immediately gets out to it and they get the turnover. So Hofstra now has it with Nikki Manella, who has speed but does not have any options as she will slow it down and she gets tripped up. So Hofstra is going to have possession as they will restart it here. It'll be with Nikki Manella. She had a pass over to Kate Fiola and she will take it again. As Manella gets into positions. Fiola with it. Has a few options. She looked at Katie Kelly, but she'll take it herself. Shot off the side of the net there. As it's going to go, just barely avoid going out of bounds. And Brown's going to have possession starting up with it now. As Hofstra immediately just starts with that heavy pressure to try and get Balkanis off of her game. But it's going to get taken away over the Hofstra restricted line. Then over midfield as Emmy Lau now has it for this Brown team. So it goes back behind the net is Claire Jeski will have it for Brown. She's getting marked up by a defender for Hofstra and Kendall Smith. She passes up top where it finally makes its way to number 27, Leah Caputo. Caputo on the far side. She makes a pass. As it's now on the stick of number 26, Annie Burton. Burton takes it back behind the net, fakes a pass up top. She has an option in Caputo, and she will take it. So 26 to 27, as now Leah Caputo has it. She's still being marked by Bryn Hepting. Finds a pass and a teammate in Claire Jeske. So Jeske will take it back behind the net. And she will use her speed, but she does not fully commit to going on that wraparound. So she will pass to Maddie Joyce. I have to imagine with a four goal lead here, Brown willing to take some time off the clock. Joyce with a shot that just barely goes wide to that left side, but they will retain possession. Now it's on the stick of Annie Burton on the reset. She's going to use her speed. She fakes a pass and finds one shot just over the net there by Eliudo. As there's five seconds left on the shot clock, so Brown's going to have to move quickly, and they will take full advantage of getting that clock to keep running as they send it into the corner. Hofstra's going to have to move quickly. Seven minutes, 20 seconds left in the game. Hofstra down by four. It is 10 to six. Yep. If Brown, if Brown's main goal there was not to score, running. 80 seconds off the clock and then sending the ball deep into the corner like that. That's just about as good as a goal. As much time as possible run off the clock there for Hofstra. Pupke with it for the pride. And she will go across the field and find a teammate in Megan Flannery. Flannery will send it over to Katie Kelly. Kelly does not have any options, so she will find one and she flips it to a teammate in Kate Fiola, but she's going to get tripped up. So Hofstra is going to have a reset. Not a free position attempt, though. It's going to be on that perimeter fan. So we will hear that's 30 fouls now against Brown. Just Hofstra unable to take full advantage of uh, those fouls committed by Brown. A team that at points has not had the discipline that you'd want is Pupke has it. Pupke flips over to Manella. Manella cutting towards the middle. She has the ball knocked out of her stick as she goes for the shot. And a quick transition now for Brown. Quick passing, and it's going to find its way to Mia Muscone as she goes back and forth with Lau. Muscone still with it. She fakes a pass to Lau. She's going to take it in herself. Shot. Good save there by Smith as she immediately starts to direct traffic. She has one attacker in the area near her in number 26, Annie Burton. So she will send it out wide where Hofstra can finally get it over that midfield line as Katie Kelly now has it. She goes over the restricted line as she is on that H 
TR and A of that written Hofstra logo on the far side here. And she will send it up top to Megan Flannery. Five minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the game. Hofstra still down by four. It's 10 to six in favor of Brown, who have scored three goals in the fourth quarter to open up their lead. Pass goes back by the net to Nikki Manella, who has three goals in this one. And she has 13 total shots. So Manella's still with it. Had an option to her teammate. Spins around. A flag will fly. Hofstra's going to have a free position attempt here. That's what Nikki Manella can really bring to a team. Even when nobody else is open, she can create a chance on her own. From nearly nothing there behind the net, she just spins it around. It gets it to a vulnerable area. Now a free position attempt coming up for the bride. So it would also be a yellow card. It looks like... The guilty party is going to be Sophia Rucker for Brown. So Hofstra with two minutes on this yellow card. They have the opportunity Brown as they are one for three so far on free position attempts. Now will be on the near side middle hash mark. Not too many options. Got to imagine she's going to try and just go for a quick shot here. So getting into position again. It's freshman versus freshman. It's Claire Mahoney will be in goal going against the other freshman in Nikki Manella. So we wait for the ref's official start. Ref whistle will blow, and Manella will settle down and pass it back to Coletti. So Hofstra immediately gets in their passing attack as it goes back behind the net. They're passing clockwise in the perimeter before they go counterclockwise as Taylor Manella gets that pass back from a teammate in Rachel Graff. Pass in the middle. Settler just could not settle that ball down as she's going to lose it and taking it quickly up the field is Brown. Good job for Brown to hold out her stick. That was number 23, Maddie Joyce, who made a smart move, but she's still going to lose it. Hofstra has it with Kelly. She will lose it herself, and Hofstra will settle it down back at that midfield area with Jackie Gaddy. Gaddy looking for someone. She doesn't have really any options, so she just spins around, will find a teammate in Kendall Smith, who herself will find Bryn Hepting. Hepting... Sends one up to Rachel Graff, and Hofstra has it back in the offensive zone. Taylor Manella with it, as she slows it down. 66 seconds left on the shot clock. One minute flat left on that yellow card, and four minutes, 10 seconds left in the game. Ball makes its way up top to Coletti, as Nikki Manella now has it, then back to Coletti. Hofstra playing very slow and methodical as it goes to the side of the net. Over to Graff. Pass in the middle, shot, and scores! So there's a goal for the Hofstra Pride. It's now 7-2-10. Good job for Hofstra to get back in this one. As there is 3 minutes, 53 seconds left. Have to take advantage of this upcoming draw control, though, as it was Lauren Coletti who scored for the Pride. That's just what they have to do. They have to just keep working. They can't give up here, especially with just under 4 minutes left. Still a lot of game left to play Coletti. Showing that she's not ready to give in yet. Pushing, pushing hard there, working hard to get it into the net. And now she's got another goal in this one. Actually, that, I believe that is her first in this game. Fourth, fourth of, the, of the, season. the season. And now Hofstra just down by three. Still a chance here late in this game. And we got a switch here as it's going to be Megan Flannery on the draw control for the Pride. She still will go up against Emmy Lau, as Lau has won the last few against Courtney Carollo. As that is one back, it's going to be a false start, and Hofstra's going to get possession there. So they have a chance. 30 seconds left on this advantage. They have a chance to score another goal as they're playing it very slowly. Now it goes to Bryn Hepting. Hepting goes to a teammate in Rachel Graff. As Graf has it, whistle blows, timeout will be called by head coach Shannon Smith in the Hofstra Pride. They have 20 seconds left to figure it out, and they are down by three. So for Hofstra, if they can capitalize in these next 20 seconds, or at least capitalize on this offensive possession, this becomes a game yet again. Absolutely, and not only do you mathematically get right back in it, you'd only be down by two, but you have the momentum on your side. You'd have two goals in quick succession on the woman up advantage. So that's just something that gives your team a morale boost, especially on the attack. It shows to yourself that you can score even when, you know, things haven't been going your way in this game. Uh, you know, 
It has been Nikki Manoa leading the charge, but as of late, it's been other players that have been stepping up, helping her out on the offensive attack. So if, if Hofstra's depth scoring can continue to show out here late, supporting Manoa on the charge, that can be really key in helping them get back despite the odds here late in this game. Well, Manoa has been far and away the Hofstra offensive engine. She has three goals, one assist, 14 total shots. One player I'd look out for is her older sister in Taylor. She only has one assist. She has yet to take a shot in this afternoon's game. So got to imagine that she might get a little bit more involved still. The number one thing for Hofstra right now is they have to be successful on this offensive opportunity. They have four minutes 30 or three minutes 33 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And they need it to score four straight goals. They have one goal, so now they need three left. They've done it already. They've scored four straight goals before. We've seen it. We've seen it this game. We've seen it against Vanderbilt. We've seen plenty of times where Hofstra can go on runs. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not out of the question, especially for a team that can score in bunches like this Hofstra Pride bunch. It's just, you know, getting hot at the right time here, and that's going to be something that pays dividends over the course of the long season. Well, 83 seconds on the shot clock, so time is not a factor in that department. However, with just over three minutes and 30 seconds, time will be a factor, and it's starting to become a factor as Hofstra will start up with Taylor Manella just waiting for the ref's official go-ahead, and Manella will start up for the pride. She's going to find a teammate. Hofstra going very quickly as it makes its way back by the net to Katie Kelly. Kelly has Flannery. As Flannery gives a shrug, does not know exactly what the want as it goes back to Nikki Manella. So two seconds left on that yellow card, so we'll be back to even strength here. As a pass in the middle, Sedler just could not get that shot off. And Hofstra had a great advantage and a smart decision by Brown and Maddie Joyce to just leave that for Claire Mahoney in her crease. So Mahoney will send one real quick to Julia Ford, but that is undone by the ref's whistle. And we're going to have a green card as Hofstra is going to be penalized for the first time as that is Katie Kelly will be the guilty party there. Hey, you respect the aggressiveness there by Kelly, just trying to force the mistake in net by Mahoney, especially when she's had some trouble clearing her lines in this game, but just a little bit over aggressive there. And now she heads over to the sin bin for a minute. So immediately getting a talking to by Coach Smith, as that is not what you needed if you're the Hofstra Pride, one of your offensive players going to sit for a minute while you go on a manpower disadvantage. So Brown slowing it down. They still have a three goal lead. They aren't in a huge need to get goals as Mia Moscone has it. She will send it across as it goes back and forth with Andy Burton having it. Burton passing back and forth still with Julia Ford as it now finds a new target in Claire Jeske. So Brown still has it. Jackie Mason as it finds its way all the way to the original player in Mia Moscone. Moscone goes to Jeske. Jeske goes to Ford. Ford slowing it down. Just over two minutes left to play in the game as Hofstra still trails by three. Moscone has it. Fakes a few passes. He's going to find Ford on the far side. Pass in the middle and it gets bobbled around and no one can get on the end of it. And finally, a shot comes from number 23. Maddie Joyce hits the side of that, and Jess Smith will pick it up and send it back the other way. Yeah, it was tough luck for Joyce. She just had a tough angle there and couldn't slot it in short side past Jess Smith. A pick off there is that was a bad pass from Kate Viola, and it is going to get taken back the other way by Maddie Joyce. So Hofstra with a chance to go back on offense. That's going to be undone. There is 77 seconds left on the shot clock. So not much difference as uh, or Brown is just slowing it down on the opposite side there as Mia Moscone will just opt to pretty much hold her stick at her waist while no one on Hofstra is pressuring her. It's a smart play. They could take it down to six seconds left on the game clock if they just sit here and let the shot clock roll out as... Uh, some of the Hofstra faithful are starting to abandon the uh, the bleachers there over on the far side. That is the men's lacrosse team who was victorious earlier today as we finally have some action. But Moscone's still carrying it. She has one player in the area in Jackie Gaddy, but 
Gaddy is not really doing anything to pressure as she's just getting her stick up in lanes, but Moscone does not need to do anything as she's just going to cradle it. She will take it to that corner. 25 seconds left in the game, 17 seconds left on the shot clock. So, again, not much time as Moscone takes it from back behind the net, sends it up top where she finds a teammate, Caputo, as Caputo will take it behind the net with five seconds left on that shot clock. But she does not need to do anything as she will spin it off and send one into the corner. And that will just about do it for this one as the clock will keep running. Three, two, and one. And the Brown Bears have opened up their season with a victory on the road here at Hempstead in Hofstra University as Claire Mahoney played a great game making 11 saves on 15 or 18 total shots as the Hofstra Pride for periods of today struggled to get balls in the back of the net and struggled with the consistency and Brown took full advantage as they come away with a 10 to 7 victory. We're going to take one final timeout when we come back we will fully recap today's action that resulted in that 10-7 Brown victory. You're listening to Hofstra Pride Women's Lacrosse, presented by Flow Sports in 88.7 FM, WRHU. We welcome you back to James M. Short for the final time this afternoon. We're in the second leg of our lacrosse doubleheader. The Brown Bears have come into Hempstead and opened up their season with a W as they hand Hofstra their first loss of the young campaign. For the final time, my name is Jack, Sar Jack McCarthy, joined alongside by Ian Benke. And a tough game at times for the Pride. They looked good in spurts, but they just struggled at getting a full game. And it was one part just a failure to launch, another part Claire Mahoney for Brown, a stellar collegiate debut. Absolutely, and if you're a Brown Bears fan, you have a lot to be uh, looking forward to, especially with Mahoney. She still has you know, a promising career ahead of her. This was just her debut. She has a bright future ahead of her, and, uh, and I believe that that really provided a spark plug for this Brown Bears team. They were led from the back. It was 11 saves for Mahoney, only 7 goals allowed in a very impressive collegiate debut, a 6-11 save percentage. And then, you know, it just led, inspired that team from the back forward. You look at the uh, the Brown Bears, they had Moscone with 3 goals, a hat trick for her, and 10 shots. And that really provided enough offensive attack. And then a pair of players, Jeschke and Burton, each with a pair of goals. So that was really all that Brown needed to provide the spark a, a sprinkling of uh, attacking help elsewhere but other than that it was really Mahoney that provided enough inspiration there and after that after the final horn the team swarmed her in celebration of the win and rightfully so and for the pride five different goal scorers but they did not have anyone with multi goals except for Nikki Manella who had another good game following her CAA player of the week campaign that she had just a few days ago down in Vanderbilt but for Hofstra they did not have they only had three total assists on those seven goals and that's not what you want they were not getting passes they were not really getting offensive generated and while one part again Mahoney has played a great game she was she was stellar Hofstra at times just really failed to launch in it's something that you want to see them have that correction because even in that win against Vanderbilt a few days ago, they had some points where they were not as strong as you would have liked them to be. Right, and I mean at this point, yes, again, you have to tip your cap to the Bear to the Bears defense and to Mahoney in net, but also you have to adjust to what looks they're giving you on defense, especially uh, with, with the coverage that they had. Uh, Hofstra really didn't make the adjustments that they needed to to break down that defense with passing plays. It was mainly individual efforts, especially from Nikki Manella, to break down that defense, which led to her goals. She had 14 shots, but again, if we had to find one nitpick in Manella's game, she had six turnovers, which, uh, again, kind of originated from her trying to make something by herself in the offensive end. And those 14 shots for Nikki Manella, that accounted for half of the prize total right. shots. They would go through the stats. That's Hofstra, 28 total shots. Brown, 24. Hofstra had 18 shots on goal as opposed to Brown's 15. That meant that 
In her collegiate debut, Claire Mahoney made 11 saves, while on the other side, Jess Smith made only 5 saves. A big discrepancy is in the fouls. Brown had 30 as opposed to Hofstra's 13. Brown ultimately won the draw controls at 11 to 10. Both teams had one free position goal. For Brown, they went one for four, and for the Pride, they went one for three. Hofstra went 15 for 19 on clears, as opposed to Brown's 17 for 21. Hofstra had one more turnover at 21 to 20, and both teams caused eight total turnovers. And one of those big ones, I said, that those fouls, 30 to 13 is a huge difference in fouls, and Hofstra just really was not able to take advantage of it. And another thing is, with those fouls is all the green and yellow cards. Brown had a total of five cards, four yellows, one green. Hofstra had to wait until just barely under three minutes to have their first green card as it was Katie Kelly who got it. Yeah, and it's just all about when you get those opportunities, you have to take advantage if you're the Hofstra Pride. Having that many opportunities on the woman advantage and not being able to get uh, uh, more than one goal is just something that they have to work on heading into uh, their, their future slate of games. Well, that'll just about do it for us in this lacrosse doubleheader here in Hempstead. Plenty of things to go around. On the radio side, a thank you to John D'Souza, our engineer, for pushing all the right buttons. On the TV side, a thank you to the entire Hofstra athletic communications staff and Flow Sports. For my color partner, Ian Banky, I'm Jack McCarthy. Once again, the Hofstra Pride fell to the Brown Bears by a score of 10-7. to They will be in action next Saturday as they travel up to Fairfield, Connecticut for a game that starts at 1 p.m. However, until next time, remember, roll pride.